Welcome to City Church Online. Welcome to City Church Online. You want to try it all together? Yeah. Welcome to City Church Online. We're glad you're here. Welcome to City Church. We're glad you're here. <laughs> now me take a picture. Hey guys, Pastor Kyle here. We're so glad you joined us for worship today. And I want to encourage you right here and now to fill out a worship response from your phone at lovehopecity.com forward slash response. We'd love to pray for you in these trying times that we're all facing right now. And while you fill that out, let me go ahead and let you know what we're going to be doing this upcoming week for Holy Week as yes, it is Holy Week. We are going to have Good Friday and we are going to have Easter. They'll just both be online. For Good Friday, which is happening this upcoming Friday, April 10th, we're gonna stream a very simple service at 7.07 p.m. And we wanna encourage you to come prepared with the communion elements if you have them in your home. If you don't have them in your home, don't make a special trip to the store. It's not safe to do it for just one thing, just to get that. Uh, but if you're going out already, you can go ahead and grab them or you could use something that's similar enough where you could still get the gist of it. And if you do have them, you can take communion with us all together. And if you don't, you can just have a quiet reflection time in your head about communion and the significance of it. So that'll be this upcoming Friday, April 10th at 7.07 p.m. Tune in to our Facebook and YouTube channels for the live stream. And then for Easter proper, we're going to continue to do our services just the way that we've been doing them, where the premiere video goes live right at 9 a.m. And so we encourage you to join in with us for that and get involved in the conversation. You can watch it anytime after that as well, but we'll go live at 9 a.m. and then it'll stay up all day. So tune in for Resurrection Sunday right from your home. And at this time, we're gonna go ahead and take our offering. This is for those of us who call City Church home. And we wanna just continue to thank you for your generosity, especially in these trying times. We are so grateful to the Lord for you. Thanks for all you do. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service.
Desperately he wants us The things of earth Stand next to him Like a candle to the sun Unfailing father What compares to his His Holy Son, the Lion and the Lamb given to us, the Word became a man that my soul should know its Savior. Forsaken for the sake of all men. Salvation is in His blood. Jesus, Messiah, the righteous died for love.
until the work on earth is done. Watch as the clouds he rides swing low. Lifts up the sound as he makes our praises flow. Hey City Church, Pastor Roby here. In this week's Coping with COVID-19 interview, we actually wanted to hear from you. So we asked a few members from City Church how they were looking for positives in the midst of all that's going on. From two couples that had to postpone their marriage ceremonies, to jobs being lost or severely adjusted, to a parent navigating kids through this crisis. Check it out. Hey City Church, Van Smallens here and Zuko, and this is What's Up. <laughs> Well, this is actually what's up with us coping in quarantine. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's definitely been interesting because we're both in education, uh, both teachers, and uh, we've had to go to a full online model. So uh, we feel very blessed and fortunate to have our jobs and still be working uh, from home. Uh, but it's definitely been uh, challenging shifting from the in-class working with kids face-to-face -face model to something online. Yeah, definitely. So I'm learning skills that I didn't have to do before. We're, I'm basically doing web design in my district right now, trying to create content for our students um, online and switching to teletherapy for speech and language stuff. So it's been, it's like I'm still working, but it's like I'm doing a different job completely altogether. Um, that's kind of what I'm doing now. So yeah, we're, we're blessed that we can still work and our heart goes out to people who have kids at home or who have lost their jobs and are sick or maybe have family members that are sick. Fortunately for us, our family's been safe and um, healthy so far. Yep. So we're just really feeling blessed and um, we're just praying a lot for anyone who's really been affected by this. Definitely. And yeah. yeah. We love you City Church and uh, we are praying for everybody and um, we wish you uh, all the best during this time. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we love you guys. Love you. What's up City Church? My name is Carl. Uh, one positive and one negative dealing with this quarantine for COVID-19. Uh, one negative first, we'll start with the negative. I don't get to go to work, unfortunately. I love my job and I don't get to go to church, which I love my church. But on the positive, I get to focus more on God, focus more on my prayer life, focus more on reading my Bible. No excuses not to do it. And that would probably be the best because we could all use a little more Bible and we could always use a little more prayer. Hey you guys, it's Naomi and the girls. Hi! And the last two weeks have been, have been really difficult. Um, I have been trying to figure out how I'm going to serve my students uh, through online courses. I've been taking webinars to figure out how to serve my students through online courses. Uh, I've been homeschooling the girls, which has not been easy, let me tell you that. Oh. And um, I've been on top of that mothering and just doing our daily duties here at home and um, I told myself that being that we have this time together, um, I really wanted to focus on what matters the most. And um, so we start our days off with morning prayer. We've been taking bike rides, which have been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And um, we started a text thread with our neighbors 
um, and we found out that one of our neighbors is going through cancer and she's elderly. So we've been helping her find groceries and getting distilled water for her, for her oxygen tank. And um, through it all, I've been talking to the girls about um, continuing our acts of service, um, teaching them that even though we're here and we really can't get out much, we can still serve the Lord in whatever capacity we can. The girls have been video recording themselves, yes, reading, and we've been sending them out to the little ones at City Church, so that has been a blessing and an encouragement for the girls. And so um, I've just been taking this time trying to teach the girls how to bless others in times of need and how to stay positive and, um, and, and, encourage, and encourage others during this time. So I certainly hope that um, we continue doing it and that they learn that we can still serve the Lord. Even um, when we can't go out, we can figure out a way to stay positive and serve the Lord. So thanks for watching. Bye. So honestly, this time frame is really strange for all of us. I mean, having to postpone our weddings, you guys are in the same boat. You know how that's been. It's been stressful and just a very different um, type of experience. You know, we weren't anticipating any of this. Um, I don't think any of us have ever envisioned this time frame playing out as it has, but right now we are just focusing on the blessings that we have and what God has provided us during this time frame. And, um, you know, although a lot has unfolded in the past 10 days, um, I think right now we're just trying to focus on the everyday and waking up in the morning, being healthy, being able to spend time with one another still, um, like Taylor said earlier, we're still going to get married. For us, it's um, kind of insane because we just didn't expect it to happen. And as even as things were unfolding, and you can only have groups of 50 or less and then 10 or less. And it's like, well, we're going to have to change the date. You know, like we really can't, for the sake of our guests and even for our own health, like we can't be in these spaces. And it was just so hard to accept the news. And it almost felt like a kind of like we were experiencing grief because we had thought that we had dreamt of this moment that we wanted to share with our friends and family, but we couldn't, and it couldn't happen on the day that we had imagined. And it was, I know it sounds silly now, but at the same time, like that's, those were the real emotions that I, were, I was feeling at that point. But now, like however many days, and I don't even know what day it is today, but like, it's, it's like, you have to be grateful for the, for every single thing. Like, I'm glad that, I get to see my husband come home. He's part of emergency services and it's kind of insane to see him go every day and um, have him come back and who knows who he's come in contact with, but that's the reality of our world now. No, it's tough and that's the reality of things is that, you know, people have to try to find that um, silver lining because it looks very, very grim sometimes. You know, it's, I think reality struck us just recently too besides the whole wedding thing you know having people around us that have been directly affected by it and indirectly too not even with COVID but people losing their jobs you know like our family members as well friends you know and, and us having to find those little things to be grateful for every every day you know and that's how you know we're conquering things little little by little you know mm -hmm. even a couple of weeks ago there was like a food scare there wasn't any eggs there was no milk there was nothing really to no toilet, toilet paper no toilet paper nothing and you know and just being grateful that we found a carton of eggs last week and stuff like that and you know and obviously things are getting a little bit more normal it's just finding small victories to be um happy in you mm -hmm. know and having each other, having friends, people you can always like you guys. call. Yeah, having you guys and um, knowing that even the, through social distancing, there's still people that are answering phones and answering texts. And I think that goes a, a, a long ways nowadays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, uh, your identity is really brought out during times of crisis and knowing that we're surrounded with people that are strong and stuff. 
you know makes us strong you know so I like what you're saying about just finding the uh, the small victories um, definitely for us uh, you know having to postpone our wedding having to uh, you know postpone her job I'm losing my job and uh, figuring out how to keep it going in, in this weird time uh, but on the same same page you know same same story that we're, we're still gonna get married uh, in our own way uh, we're still finding ways to pay our bills to put food on the table and to uh, keep alive but keep positive just continuing to move forward just in new ways yeah uh, especially when things are just so un unknown and uncertain and, and you know nobody knows nobody knows there's no specific plan for this um, so every day you just take it as a new day and just keep it going keep positive and, and find new ways to do what you got to do and, and that's, that's how we're coping, coping with covid <laughs> Hey guys, Pastor Kyle here. Hey, in light of all the bad news that we're getting every single day, I wanna to continue to share positives at the beginning of the weekly message. First thing I wanna share with you is that the online content from last week's church service drew an extraordinary amount of views online. And that trend is ever increasing and frankly, unlike anything we've ever seen in City Church's history. As of Thursday, the service itself had over 1,300 views online. The interview with Marinda Walatarski generated over 9,000 views. The worship piece, The Blessing, had over 1,200 views. Simply put, people are seeking God out there right now, and they're interested in the things that we're posting in the world. God continues to use City Church in a unique way during this era of physical distancing. Number two, I see inklings of a nationwide revival in the making. I've heard other pastors comment about it as well. And even though the physical doors of our churches may be closed at the moment, the doors of Jesus's church online are wide open and reaching more people than ever. For the last 10 to 15 years, Christians, myself included, have been talking about the culture's waning interest in spiritual things and with very good cause. But for the time being, man, this trend appears to be shifting in a positive direction towards the things of the Lord. Will it continue? Will it lead to a new generation of Christians? Will it lead to prodigals coming home? Will local churches have more people inside of them at the end of all this? Only time will tell. But in the meantime, I would ask that you join me in praying that this virus causes the greatest spiritual awakening of our time. Man, we need it. The third positive I want to share with you at the top of the message today is that Marinda Walatarski's mom, Marinda, is recovering. And I want you to hear it from her lips directly. Hi, City Church. Hello, everyone. Uh, we just want to thank you so much for all of your prayers and give you a little update. Uh, Mom, uh, since my last time that I talked with Pastor Kyle, she has slowly improved the rest of that week. And on the 12th day of being on the ventilator, uh, they decided to take out the breathing tube and she is doing all right and was actually just moved from the ICU to a general care COVID floor um, on Wednesday of this last week. And we've been supported so greatly by all of your prayers and it's not just the healing of Berinda, it's, it's been a, a support, a platform under each of us to know that so many people are praying and, and it gave us strength and and we could relay some of that on to Belinda and we just thank you all for relaying your support for her through your prayers to the Rafa of God, the, the healer. Yeah, we are so thankful for all of you. Um, we got to talk to mom on the phone a couple times now and she still has her personality back of <laughs> caring about if I'm by myself on a walk or asking about people's birthdays. So we just are so thankful. Or, or if somebody had a baby. Yeah, <laughs> and so a lot has been happening and we're just so thankful. So thank you for your prayers and don't forget that, that God hears us in it all. Yeah, there is <laughs> great power in prayer. Mm -hmm. Amen, bye. Berinda's recovery can only be attributed to the prayers of tens of thousands. Though she has a long road ahead of her, God has taken her from death's doorstep back into the land of the living. 
As we all continue to cope with COVID-19, I want to encourage you to continue to look for life amongst the disease and the death we continue to see daily. My message title today is The Difference of Deliverance. There's a scene in the movie Bruce Almighty where Bruce awakes to the sudden and overwhelming ability to hear everyone's prayers that they're asking God about. And out of nowhere, he can hear all these different voices asking for all kinds of different things. Now, I gotta say, I don't recommend the movie for its theology, but it's a funny movie. Here's why I share this little anecdote today. You don't need to be granted temporary divine superpowers to know what just about everyone who's alive today is praying for. I'll tell you what they're praying. They're praying, Lord, deliver us from this virus. Isn't that what you're praying for right now? I know I am. Man, divine deliverance would make all the difference. And certainly God can do anything he wants to do. But at least up until today, the Lord has allowed this virus to continue. Psalm 91 is a great text to read about divine deliverance. So open a Bible there now. We're going to pray, and then we're going to read it together. Would you pray with me? Father God, we thank you that you are our deliverer. You are our provider. You are our hope in time of need. And so, Lord, today we pray that as we read your word, that you would open our eyes to see what you want us to see from it, that you would open our ears to hear what you want us to hear from it. And God, that you would open our hearts today that we would respond and become the disciples you want us to be as a result of it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Psalm 91, one through six says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near to you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall befall you. No plague come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and on the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What an amazing passage, isn't it? Here's a question to think about to start us off from Psalm 91. Is this a promise from God that we can take him to the bank on every time? Or is this kind of one of those things that's more of a principle? that rings true over time. Well, allow me to make a case for each side. Here's an argument in favor of it being more of a principle. As a whole, the Psalms and Proverbs tend to be mostly in the principles that ring true category of the Bible rather than the promises from God on every occasion kind of portion of literature. And on top of that, there's the whole human experience component to add to all of this. Simply put, all of us have had times when it seemed like God just didn't deliver us. Or maybe it was with someone we know from a certain situation. So that would kind of, for me at least, seem to put it more in the overarching principle category of things. Now here's an argument in favor of it being a promise straight from God. The you in the text that refers to believers is singular throughout the entire psalm. And usually in the Bible, when you see that word you referring to believers, it's meaning you all, plural, or like you Southerners know how to say, y'all. <laughs> in other words, it's believers collectively. It's pretty remarkable when you think about the fact that Psalm 91 uses the singular form of the word you in its entirety. That's a pretty solid point in favor of it applying as a personal promise from God for every believer for all time. Now, let me give you my theologically profound and thought through answer. 
And if you go to City Church on a regular basis, or you've heard me say this before, you know that means, say it out loud in your house, I don't know. So is Psalm 91 a promise or is it a principle? The first thing I want you to write down is you decide. <laughs> um, I lean on it being more of a promise, but unfortunately I've seen believers take Psalm 91 to mean that nothing bad will ever happen to them because they're Christians. You know, every human being on planet earth knows that's just not true. Horrible things have happened to amazing believers all throughout history. And at the same time, there's also a measure of divine protection that every believer can personally attest to. One of the things that is even cited in Psalm 91, 6 as something God will deliver us from is a pestilence. A pestilence is a disease. Read the wording again. It says, you will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. Guys, we're facing the very definition of a pestilence that stalks in the darkness. Think about it. You don't know where it is. You don't know who has it. People who have it don't even know they have it. And we're told that they're the ones who are spreading it everywhere. Everybody's on edge. <laughs> and God says, if we follow him, we don't need to fear the pestilence that stalks in the darkness because we're covered in the shadow of his wings. So how does Psalm 91.6 apply to our current pestilence known as COVID-19. Is it reasonable to expect that Christians won't get this or that if they do, they won't die from it? Well, the short answer to that question is that some very godly Christians have already died in significant number from this outbreak. In fact, I know of a pastor who recently passed away from it. Sometimes God's deliverance from a person's situation is death. All of us have watched someone deteriorate to the point where death was a deliverance. So yes, I believe Psalm 91 is a promise from God. And at the same time, I think God's deliverance looks differently than you and I would like at times. In John 16, it was Jesus who promised us that in the world you will have trouble. In other words, there's going to be hardship. There's going to be things that don't work out. But then in the very next sentence, Jesus also promised, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And so we can't take Psalm 91 to mean that Christians will be perfectly delivered from every bad situation every time. We can trust that Jesus overcame the world. We can trust that he will be with us all the time. We can trust that in and through him, we will be overcomers. So here's how I think the deliverance of Psalm 91 applies to us today. Whether you think Psalm 91 is a promise straight from the lips of God to your life or a principle that rings true over time, the application and the implication for what God expects believers to do to experience it and the benefits of Psalm 91 are the same. So the next section says Psalm 91 means this. And the first thing that Psalm 91 means is that God wants every person to dwell in and trust in him daily. Verse one starts out by mentioning, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Our dwelling place is where we live. There's an old saying, we abide in an abode. Our abode is where we live, it's our home. Many of us are spending so much time in our abodes right now that we're learning all kinds of new things about them that we never noticed before and all kinds of problems inside of them that we never saw before. The Psalm 91 says, that we are to dwell in the Lord, that God's very presence needs to be our home where we reside, not just a place that we visit from time to time. Just like any dwelling offers shelter and shade, so does our home in the Lord. And only the Lord can offer relief from the unsolvable problems of this world. Man, isn't that comforting? If you and I truly dwell in the Lord, we will find the comfort and the calming shade and constant protection that only God can bring. The blessings of Psalm 91 apply to the Christian who dwells in the Lord. It's unrealistic to expect that those who only run to the Lord in times of trouble will experience all the blessings associated with this Psalm. Here's the next thing. Secondly, believers who dwell in the Lord can personally attest to a lifelong pattern of deliverance. Hey, this is where every believer should be saying, amen. <laughs> I couldn't even begin to count the bad situations that the Lord has delivered me from. Could you? You know, I can think of many tests back in the days when I was in school where 
I didn't think I would pass or make it through the end of college or eventually get through grad school. In fact, I still sometimes have nightmares where I wake up in the night and I think I didn't turn in some assignment from the past. But you know what? God delivered me from all that and I got through it. In some cases from my past, I can think of sinful things that I was actually drawn to where the Lord shut all the doors before they could even happen. And God supernaturally delivered me from myself. Sometimes God will deliver you from things you don't even know you need deliverance from at the time. God will even protect you from yourself. Sometimes you might think it's not that big of a deal at the time, but God will take you out of it and he'll show you that his way is better. I can think of a relationship that I thought was the one at the time and God knew it was 100% wrong for me. When it ended, I can remember begging God in prayer for it to come back to me. But today, I thank the Lord that he delivered me by giving me the opposite of what I prayed for. See, God knew the spouse I really needed, my Lisa. And God wasn't going to let me settle for anything less. I can think of a job that I prayed for at a church that I loved more than just about anything else. And no matter how hard I tried or prayed for it, man, those doors just never opened. God knew that if I had gotten that particular church job, I would never have left because it would have been so comfortable. But God didn't want me comfortable. He wanted Lisa and I to start City Church. I can think of a time when we planted City Church in September of 2009 during the greatest economic downturn other than the one we're facing today. And in a time when startups were failing left and right and money was in short supply, the Lord met our every need. Man, guys, I could go on and on from my personal experience attesting to my lifelong pattern of deliverance as someone who dwells in the Lord. And my guess is you could do the exact same thing. You could recount time after time after time when the Lord delivered you as well. So here's where Psalm 91 absolutely rings true for every single one of us. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus and dwells in the shadow of the Almighty will be able to personally attest to that lifelong pattern of deliverance. And if you have experienced the deliverance of the Lord, I just want you to say amen in your house right now. So here's the third thing that Psalm 91 means for every believer for all time. See, God gives us the deliverance we need the most, not always the one we're asking for. Sometimes God is delivering us from something that's actually deeper than the thing that we're asking for. And the deliverance that we're asking for is not always the one that we really need. Sometimes God brings about the deliverance after a while, but lets us wait to build up our character in the meantime. Honestly, guys, hindsight is often the only way for us to know what God was delivering us from and what he's delivering us to. So let's continue to pray for supernatural deliverance from COVID-19. I've seen direct evidence that the Lord is definitely lessening this thing. I've seen evidence that the vast majority of people out there are experiencing the protection of the Lord as described in Psalm 91. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you need deliverance from today? Now, the immediate and the obvious answer is this virus, but I want you to dig down deeper inside of your own soul right now. How is this virus causing you to feel? Do you find yourself constantly feeling anxious and afraid? Do you find yourself stuck in the news more than in the word or more than in prayer. You know, the Lord will deliver us from this pestilence. I believe that 100%. But in the meantime, there might be something that the Lord wants to deliver inside of you and I. I believe God wants to teach us trust and obedience in times of severe uncertainty. I believe God is temporarily removing earthly creature comforts so we can find our fulfillment in Him. I believe God has made our nation lie down for a season. And it might not feel restful, but guys, families are eating meals together again. How amazing is that? We're learning to live again. We got really good at living without God, didn't we? Think about it. If you needed something, you didn't need to pray about it because you had Amazon Prime 
And most of the time, they'd get it to you by the end of the day if you click it in the right amount of time. You didn't need to trust God for your health because our healthcare system was decent, more or less. Sure, it isn't great and it can always be better, but it was reliable. Until suddenly, the world faces this virus that nobody knows how to treat. There's no vaccine for it and there's no clear end in sight. And so all of a sudden, we're left with no other option but to trust God. Friends, there's nothing wrong with any of the earthly things we find comfort in. But the problem, I believe, is that we started relying on those things for comfort, for protection, and deliverance that ultimately only God can deliver. Friends, God made us so much stronger than we often give ourselves credit for. Let's return to a biblical faith that trusts God in the midst of unbelievable uncertainty today. Let's return to Abraham's faith who looked at this land that didn't belong to him and this guy who simply trusted this God who said that it would be given to him and it would come about just as God said it would. And it did. Let's return to that faith that Abraham had when God said that he would give him an heir. And here he was in his 90s without a child through Sarah. Let's return to Daniel's faith who trusted in God in that lion's den and in the fiery furnace for deliverance. Let's return to David's faith as he approached Goliath the giant with nothing more than a sling, a few stones, and the power of the living God. Let's return to Jesus' faith as he went into the wilderness trusting the Lord for provision and for protection, even though it was hot and miserable. Let's return to Jesus' faith on the cross as he breathed his last breath, knowing that all along that was his mission, to die that way, only to rise from the grave three days later. Let's return to the faith of the apostles as they prayed in the upper room expectantly for the Lord to move. Man, what a lesson we can learn from that today in our current situation. Let's return to the faith of the early church as they proclaimed the gospel in a hostile world that was ripped apart by fear and anxiety. Friends, the church of Jesus always grows but never quite like in times of uncertainty and turmoil. There's something about the physical need to be dependent on God for deliverance that the Lord just responds to. And we're in the midst of that right now. It's hard, but God is still our shelter. He is still our refuge. He is still our dwelling place and he's still delivering us from problems and pestilences. He's still covering us with his wings. His faithfulness is still our shield. We don't need to be afraid. And no matter how many thousands fall by night, we can still trust that he's sending his angels concerning us to guard over us in all of our ways. He is protecting us because he knows our name. And when we call to him, he answers us. He's with us in times of trouble. He rescues us and honors us. He satisfies us with long life and shows us his salvation. Guys, that's the difference that deliverance makes. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your deliverance. We trust you in faith that it's coming for this virus. But in the meantime, God, we ask that you would release us from anxiety and worry and fear. Help us to cast our cares upon you, knowing that you are already on the throne, actively working on our behalf. If you're out there right now and you're watching this and you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life, and honestly, you don't know if you would go to heaven when you die, and all of this has really stirred your soul in a new way, I wanna tell you that I don't believe it's an accident that you're here watching this today, and God promises to do four things for you. Number one, he promises to forgive you of all your sins past, present, and future, just wipe it away. Number two, he promises to adopt you into his family so you can be his own son or daughter. Number three, he offers you his Holy Spirit so that you can live the life that he wants you to live. And finally, he offers you an eternal life that's beyond anything that any of us could ask for, dream, or imagine. There's only one catch. Jesus wants the steering wheel of your heart. And so if that's you, and you've been window shopping God and the Bible and the claims of Christianity, I want you to just pray this prayer with me. And it's not mystical, it's not magical. God's gonna hear the faith in your heart right as you pray along. Uh, but just pray this with me if you would. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin 
and the sins of the world. I believe you died there, and I believe you rose from the grave so I could have everlasting life. Lord, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Fill me with your spirit and give me the power to live this life for you. God, I am tired of running. Here's the steering wheel of my heart. Would you take over? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh